Debates are fast becoming a global phenomenon, currently running in not less than 60 countries, and uh, we can trace them as far back as the 60s, running in so many countries, and uh, some of those countries are those that you see, but they are becoming popular and running both at national as well as at uh, local government level. Now, there is huge debate between um, campaign strategies and political scientists with regard to the extent to which these debates are a game changer. In Kenya, during the 2013 presidential elections, they did a survey where they discovered that uh, 24% of those that were polled said that they would change their mind with regard to who to vote for based on the, on the debate. And 8% said they were still undecided who to vote for until the time of the last debate. Now, for Malawi, you will agree with me that statistics such as these are hard to come by especially since we've just begun on this path of presidential debates. But suffice to say that uh, the presidential debates have put Malawi on a new path, shifting from personality-based to issue-based campaign and politics. You agree with me that in the past few years, we've seen a situation where the popularity of a particular candidate is based on the amount of dirt they are able to, get, to dig from the backyard of their opponent. And yet, it's common knowledge that extinguishing the candle of your opponent does not, does not make your candle burn any brighter, does it? No, it doesn't. However, we still have some way to go because for Malawi, we are still engrossed in politics of tribal affiliations. And so we need to begin to see a shift from tribal politics to issue-based politics. And that's still a long way to go, but I'm glad that through the presidential debates, we are beginning to see that shift. I want to share some personal reflections with regard to what it meant to be the first moderator for presidential debates in Malawi. I discovered that uh, this phenomenon is quite a slippery path. And uh, for me, I first discovered, for the first time in my life, that I had issues that I needed to deal with to understand what this is all about. Imagine four hours, and I'm talking about four hours before the first night of the debates, to get news that the four big candidates, and I'm talking about uh, PP, UDF, DPP, and MCP, they have pulled out of the debates, and you only have four hours. Now, guess what that does to me? That brings my whole world crumbling down. Because I'm saying, did they pull out dissatisfied with the process, or as a vote of no confidence for me as moderator? And then, on the first debate, something actually went wrong. While I was still battling with these butterflies in my tummy, guess what? I forget to introduce her to Pele Mulusi. <laughs> now, I'm meant to be an impartial referee in this whole process. And so in my mind, I'm saying, what do UDF supporters think about me? Am I impartial? Am I qualified to do this job? While I quickly tried to resolve the situation and apologize to the audience, I was still saying I'm not sure whether I have been forgiven by the supporters. And you should have seen me walking back to my car park that evening, wondering where the first blow would come from. <laughs> but thank God, to this very day, I remain without any scars. That's how vulnerable I felt. I felt like one of the passengers in that particular um, vehicle. Who dares go out to fix that tire? <laughs> the other challenge with the debates is I felt there were too many candidates. Think about 11 
candidates. I mean, how do you meaningfully engage in debate with 11 candidates? We've seen the other countries where debates involved about two candidates, some of them maybe four, but a whooping 11 candidates. And yet I had no control over, over matters. I mean, the debate format was carefully negotiated with the president, and there was no way I was going to change the format willy-nilly. And yet, if you read the um, social network, it was like I was in control. This guy needs to make the debates more exciting. We need to see more fireworks. There is no blood in the debates, and so on and so forth. Yes, there were too many candidates, but I was happy that there were too many. Now, that sounds like a contradiction. The fact that 11 out of 12 endorsed the debates, for me, was an endorsement of a new culture of public accountability. And that I was happy about. <laughs> yes, there were too many, but one was missing, and that was the incumbent, the then incumbent president, Joyce Banda. She refused to come. She lost the elections. Whether there's a linkage between the two, I'll leave it to you to judge. <laughs> the debates provided very jovial moments, and I was excited that as we shifted from the first debate to the second and to the third, there was a, a sense of loosening up on my part, as well as the, 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 the candidates themselves. There was a huge sense of camaraderie, and uh, I was so delighted to find that they could throw jokes at one another. Uh, which I felt was sending an exceptional signal to the people of Malawi that these guys are not enemies after all, and why should we on the ground, you know, throw stones at one another when we see friendships in such a great manner? Yes, Malawi indeed, our common denominator. We can have differences, but we have one piece of land which belongs to all of us, and it's called Malawi. I liked the sense of quarantine that was provided to me as moderator. No one could interrupt me. Even if something went wrong, you just had to live with it. But that also had problems. I mean, what if something drastically went wrong? There was no way of somebody being able to alert me of something that needs correction. So there was the good and the bad with regard to being quarantined. One of the questions that I asked during the last debate was I asked them to say, in the event that you win the elections, how are you going to use the collective wisdom that we've seen so marvelously during the three debates? Now, one of them said, OK, I'll rope in every candidate into my cabinet. We haven't seen that happen so far. But there was consensus among all of them that whoever wins should at least utilize this huge amount of wisdom that we've seen during the debates. And I'm glad that some three weeks ago, President Mutarika did just that, where he invited the opposition leaders to State House for them to begin to engage in issues of national development. I think that's a good direction for Malawi, so long as, so long as it goes beyond mere window shopping. Six months down the road, can we revisit the shopping mall and revalidate our shopping? I'm saying yes. And I suggest that we have two key assignments in that regard. Number one, we need to strengthen and expand the national space for dialogue and debate. Very important for Malawi, because we still have issues cropping up that require vigorous national debate. Currently, one issue that is um, very hot in Malawi is the issue of uh, federalism. Should Malawi adopt a federal system of government? And I'm glad there's a lot of debate, but I'm also saddened that uh, there's some misunderstanding with regard to why this debate at all. The other day, I was annoyed to hear of an experience of a friend of mine who comes from the northern part of Malawi who was stopped by the traffic police. And they said, OK, let's see your license. And he shows them the license. And uh, they look at his name, which was evidently Northern. And then the policeman said, so you are the guys who are trying to dismember Malawi, as if it's a traffic offense. <laughs> the second assignment I'm suggesting is that we need to interrog interrogate fundamentals of our democracy. 
Is the meaning of democracy trickling down to the people of Malawi? Are we beginning to see the requisite transformation in our land with regard to democracy? And are we choosing the leaders that we want, or we are having leaders that are being imposed on us? In my view, I strongly believe that if we attend to these two key assignments, we will have been on a good path in the transformation of motherland. And that will be good value for democracy. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>